if Tesla is successful at making sufficiently intelligent FSD software, then if it's smart enough, it will be easy to adapt that to a Chinese driving environment with the correct approach and the amount of data that they need. The big news, I guess. So the Tesla China insured numbers for this last week, uh, it looks like in 17 to 23 June, you have 17,500. This is, uh, you know, at least a good growth from the previous weeks before that. In fact, it's the highest we've seen weekly numbers for the year. Yeah, Tesla Chan does a great job tracking everything here. You can see this. This is 2024, January, February, March, April, May, June. He's been tracking the numbers. And you can see here that we've, you know, it's a slow start, right? There's a seasonal to uh, automotive sales. January is usually very low. And then finally be popping up. Gary Black kind of report, uh, summarizes it well. This was the best week of 2024 so far, included 6,000 Model 3s, the highest since the Model 3 Highland launched last November, one week left in the quarter. So what we're seeing here is that it's 14% quarter over quarter compared to last quarter, but it's still 7.2% beyond below what it, what the Tesla China did last year on the second quarter last year. So here's the graph. The 2024 Q2 is in pink. So if you look at 2024, um, as the weeks of the quarter, that's a pink. And here we are, the highest of the uh, quarter for the quarter, at least. And then in um, 24Q1 is blue. This is the Q1 much lower. And then if you look at last year's 23Q2, that's green, then it's still higher than the pink, or it's just barely uh, getting there. Yeah, that would be higher. Okay, what'd you think about all this? Yeah, it's good to see these numbers really starting to trend upwards. And, you know, the other thing, the 17,500 number, not only was that the highest this year, that was within spitting distance of some of the highest weeks last year. So I think the highest weeks in 2023 were in the mid 18,000 uh, range. And so, you know, only a few percentage points away from highest weeks production ever in the history of uh, the Tesla China plant. And like they said, this is the highest since they rolled out the Highland update. And so that is, you know, something that they do have to continue to work through ramping up that newer product to where they can get it to the same high levels that they had the previous version of the Model 3 to. Um, and so all of that is good news. And to see those here early in the year um, is it, good where hopefully by the end of this year, we can be reaching those 18 and then maybe even surpassing into the 19,000 a week, 20,000 a week um, numbers. And so I think that all of this is good context for people to realize that things are going relatively well in China that we're um, continuing to have high levels of reduction. We haven't really built out any new factory space. And so you know, we shouldn't be expecting China to grow significantly beyond the amount of production that they've had in the past, um, just because that was such a well-utilized factory. Um, but I think this signals good strength of the business there in China at this point in time. Good. So China is doing fairly okay. At least this was, it was getting scary to see what's going to happen to China's economy. Looks like early signs, but looks like it's, um, it's doing okay so far. So another bit of news here is that FSE transfers. So when Elon was at the annual shareholder meeting, Elon was asked the question, please let us do transfers. He paused for a long time. He said, maybe one more quarter. And he agreed to the one quarter. So starting today and it will end in August 31st. So you have about, about two months here. If you buy a new vehicle, Model 3, Model Y, Model S or X, then you'll have the ability to transfer if you've got ownership of full self-driving from one of your previous cars, if you want to. It's still stackable with all existing incentives. You can trade it in for the existing VIN with the FSD. It's not, or trade-in is not, not required. So this is the, um, obviously, a beautiful photo. You can see here, it's already started. Transfer full self-driving capability to your new Tesla. So they've already done this before, and he just allowed you to do one more. What's your thoughts about that? Like, why is Elon so resistant to letting anybody just transfer FSE at any time. So if you buy it for one car, why can't you decide to switch it to another car? I think he is definitely under the thought process that FSD is something that becomes more and more valuable over time. 
And obviously he's been bullish on the timelines and it's taken longer to get to that point than he expected. Um, but all of that said, I think that, you know, he wants to make sure that the value that Tesla's receiving for selling these vehicles and these products to customers is, you know, reasonable for the amount of value that's being provided to them. And if we get to the point where we do have the essentially driverless robo taxi levels of functionality, then that $15,000 price point is too low for what that vehicle can then do. And so he's trying to avoid the situation where they sell products for $15,000 to consumers or 8,000 or uh, 12,000, whatever the case may be. Um, it's kind of shifted around over time and then have that piece of software be worth 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, a hundred thousand dollars. Um, and they've kind of missed out on that ability to monetize that at a level that really is, I think, in keeping with, with the amount of value that's being provided. So I think that's where he's at. Um, obviously customers are on the other end of that. They want to, you know, if you've spent it feels like a lot of money, you know, whether it's $8,000, $12,000 or $15,000. That's a lot. It's a, a lot, especially in comparison to the value of the vehicle itself at this point in time. And so, you know, if you like lay that amount of cash out, of course, you would like to maximize the amount of value that you get in return for that over time. Um, but since we haven't gotten to that point where it really is able to drive like Elon's, the value of FSD in Elon's mind is based on what FSD is going to become. And for customers, the value of FSD is what it can do right now. And there is a gap there. Like, and I a hundred percent understand that tension between customers and Elon's perception of that value right now, because it is the gap that is real. Um, that FSD, while it is a very impressive piece of software that holds a lot of exciting potential, that it's not a perfect piece of consumer software at this point in time. And so people are like, hey, I've paid a lot of money for this and I haven't really gotten as much value out of it yet today as I paid for it. And so I think I should be able to transfer it to the next vehicle so that I can continue to get more value back out of it. And I think that's why Elon is, you mm -hmm. know, willing to make this concession and go ahead and allow these FSD transfers is because it is a fair concern. Yeah, it is a good thing. Okay, good answer. So here's the big news. Um, we're continuing here, not only, you know, the progress ourselves when we see FSD, how well is it moving? We're seeing now other CEOs have been testing Tesla's FSD and they're making comments. And so the latest is Xiaopeng CEO. He was in the U.S. in the last several months. He's been testing not only Tesla's FSD, but Waymo. He was testing Tesla's 12.3.6, uh, not 12.4, and he was asking for that. Uh, so then he tested it, and then he posted on Weibo his feedback and thoughts. And basically, it's all very, very positive, right? So he shared his observations, and he said that Tesla's FSD is um, very bullish now on autonomous driving, even going out to say that he sees fully autonomous driving could be a chat GPT moment next year. So and he says this, in the past couple of days, I had the chance to experience FSD version 12.3.6 in California. Also took a ride in Waymo. Overall, Waymo performed better in downtown San Francisco, while FSD excelled in Silicon Valley and on the highways, achieving very high scores and handling various road conditions smoothly. Uh, very nicely you know, politically said here. I am truly impressed by the significant pro pro progress FSC has made in just a few months. We plan to learn from FSC's excellent features and user experience. I believe 2025 will be the chat GPT moment for fully autonomous driving. Here's his post on Weibo. Yeah, you know, the, um, he, throughout the experience, FSC's performance is still very smooth. It makes me feel at ease in most road conditions, which is very similar to that of a human driver. Now he says this, right? China's roads are more complex than those in the U.S. with more people in cars. I'm looking forward to FSC's performance in China. At present, our Xiaopeng's XNGP has fully adapted to China's road conditions. We invite Elon to China to experience XNGP. We also look forward to more exchanges in the entire industry to jointly promote the popularization of smart driving around the world. 
I swear, Hans, this sounds like he's setting himself up for a partnership with Tesla. I mean, I don't see this as a competitive, um, you know, for him competing uh, with Tesla. What's your thoughts when you saw that? Definitely strikes me as very politically savvy on his part. You know, he's saying nice things about everyone. He's saying nice things about Waymo. He's saying nice things about Tesla. And then, of course, he's going to plug his own product and the development that their team has worked on, which I think is to be expected from a person in his position. And um, but also just think about the fact that actions speak louder than words. And while he's saying nice things about Waymo and their performance inside of San Francisco, especially downtown specifically, um, Xiaoping has kind of moved away from the HD maps approach and they are moving much more towards Tesla's vision of how to actually solve autonomy in the long term. Um, and so I think that his comments around FSD specifically are good just because they are coming from the context of a, a company that's trying to follow Tesla's lead in how to solve this problem much more so than Waymo's. And it is a comparison and a contrast between, okay, there are definitely benefits to the Waymo approach in certain areas, but the overall question is, is it scalable long-term? Can you produce those vehicles in large enough quantities? And are those vehicles then adaptable to a large enough range of different driving conditions? And his point about China's roads are very complex and probably much more complex than San Francisco. And that may be the reason that he decided to pursue Tesla's direction in the first place was that they just could see that when they were trying to follow Waymo, they were not able to even get a viable product in a Chinese uh, city. Whereas now it seems like they feel very confident about their approach and the quality of their product. So um, I would agree that that's going to be the correct direction. Like Tesla's overall approach, when you just step back and think about it, is that they have to have intelligence. Like intelligence has to be the thing that is the differentiating factor in FSD versus other things. That we're not going to rely on sensors. We're not going to rely other than vision. Like we're not going to go with LiDAR. We're not going to do ultrasonic sensors. We're not going to even super rely on radar. They use it some in some instances, but not in others. Um, the, the approach is we're, we need vision and intelligence. And um, the question is, while Xiaoping has apparently adapted their system to Chinese driving conditions better, where are they at in that intelligence piece of the the equation because if tesla is successful at making sufficiently intelligent fsd software then the like if it's smart enough it will be easy to adapt that to a chinese driving environment with the correct approach and the amount of data that they need whereas um for xiaoping if they have a system that is not necessarily intelligent and uses a lot of crutches in order to operate then it may not still be scalable. They may still be stuck with some of the same types of limitations. Maybe they're slightly different, but of the same general um, class that keep Waymo from being able to scale to lots of driving conditions and lots of different um, geographies mm -hmm. as well. So that kind of all remains to be seen. But I do hope that, and, and I agree with his assessment that all these AV companies that are like, you know, we can debate is Waymo's way the, way the right way? Is it going to work? Is Tesla's way the right way? Is it going to work? Is Xiaoping's way the right way? Is it going to work? Those are valid discussions that need to be had. But there is definitely a sense that all of these people that are trying to bring autonomous driving to the real world safely and in mass, like that is a very positive effort that people should appreciate that you know even if Waymo ultimately doesn't end up becoming the most profitable company in all of autonomous driving the work that they have done to commercialize this product and work with regulators and begin the process of getting customers to understand what this 
technology is capable of and to be comfortable with it is all extremely valuable work. And these people, this is a point that um, Gally from HyperChange was making the other day in a conversation that we were having, like they are our partners in promoting and advancing autonomous driving. And ultimately autonomous driving is gonna save so many lives that all of the people that helped to bring that to reality are definitely people who are doing good work that need to be recognized for doing that good work. And I agree that they should mm -hmm. come together and they should try to promote it together and to cooperate in making not only the technology itself viable, but solving all of the regulatory problems together and solving all of the public yeah. perception problems together, because that is ultimately the best thing for the most number of people and will save the most number of lives.